there, I'm Lisa. And I'm Sarah. And welcome to the new episode of Naperville Public Library's Book Buffet, an ongoing video series where we share bite-sized samples of books that share a common theme or genre. And as per usual, all the books that we present today can be borrowed in print format and or as digital books. And if they are available as digital books, you will see one of these three pictures on the slide for Hoopla, Access 360, or Libby, which is the app for Overdrive. And on this week's book buffet, Sarah and I decided that we wanted to get cozy with some cozy mysteries. It's winter, it's snowy outside, Perfect time of year to discover a new cozy mystery series or maybe go back and reread a favorite cozy mystery series. Yeah, I love cozies. They're like the perfect, light, fluffy, but still engaging book. Absolutely. So let's get started. Sarah, what's your first cozy mystery pick today? My first pick is called Twisted Threads. And this takes place in Maine. Um, and it follows um, Angie Thomas, who just moves back to Maine, actually, because when she was younger, her mother disappeared. And unfortunately, when the novel opens, they have located her mom's body. But it does turn out that her mom has met like a tragic end. She's been murdered. The main mystery in this book is what happened to her mom. But there's a secondary mystery because her grandma started this uh, business that they are calling Mainly Needlepoint, um, which is what the series is named after. Um, and her grandma hired this sort of shady character to help her with accounts. And there's always a shady character in a cozy mystery. <laughs> always, always, yes. And uh, it turns out that he basically has been taking the client's money and then not passing it on to her grandma. So. Um, Angie is like, I got to get this sorted because when she wasn't living in Maine, she was living in Arizona and she was learning to be a PI. So she does have some investigator cred, which is not true of most cozy mysteries. <laughs> um, so she's like, Grandma, I got this. I'll figure it out. And so she goes to track this guy down and she does. And she brings him back to her grandma's house and to see all the mainly needlepoint uh, employees to make him apologize. And while he's there, he uh, drinks some tea and dies. <laughs> so her and her grandma become uh, suspects in this other mystery. So there's kind of two mysteries happening in this book. The mystery of what happened to her mom and the mystery of who murdered the shady character. So um, lots of stuff going on here. It's a very good book. And I like, too, that it's a little bit grittier than most cozies because Angie is a private investigator. She does carry a gun. But it still has all those cozy small town vibes that you want. And there's such a cute relationship between her and her grandma. I love it. And I love, like, the homecoming aspect of it, too. And I listened to this on audio. It was a great audio book also. So. Interesting. Okay. I love the cover, first of all. I mean, I love that it takes place in Maine, and we've got that big lobster pillow there. We have the obligatory cat, which is always a plus for me. And yeah, this sounds really good. And it it looks like this is the first one in the series. Is that true? Yes, there are nine books total. Ooh. This is the first one. Well, I like the fact that there are nine because if you start with this one and like it, then you've got a ways to go. So that's that's a good sign. This sounds, this was like the perfect book to start our cozy mystery episode with. Yeah, it's real fun and it's real quick. Oh, I did want to say there's not a lot of romance in this one. Some of some cozies have more romance than others. Right. If you're looking for one that doesn't really have a lot of romance, this might be a good pick. Got it. All right, Lisa, what's your first pick? My first pick is also the first in a series. It is called Dead on the Vine. Main character is Charlotte, and she moves to California because she has recently inherited a produce farm from a relative who has, has passed away. And Charlotte just figures, you know, hey, I need a change in my life. And I've been to farmer's market. So how hard can it be to run a produce farm? And she finds out the farm is barely breaking even. 
Um, so she decides to sell it, but when she's showing the farm to a real estate agent, they discover the body of a young man in the tomato fields and he has a pitchfork through his neck. So yes, that kind of puts a damper on selling the farm. So she decides to investigate the murder herself as often happens. The best part about this book is instead of having your typical cat companion, Charlotte's companion in solving this crime is a piglet. Very cute, very small, very intelligent. Um, she names him Horse because he eats a lot. <laughs> and Horse kind of reminded me a little bit of Lassie in that, you know, if you've ever watched the old Lassie TV shows, it's like Lassie barks twice and they're like, Lassie, what? Timmy fell down the well past the second old oak tree? Okay, we're on it. That's kind of how this pig is. Also, Sarah, I know that you enjoy goats. There is some references to goat yoga in this book, which I know that you would appreciate. But I've saved the best thing for last. What I found so interesting and delightful about this book is all the hidden references to Charlotte's Web. First of all, if you look at the author, it's L. Brooke White, E. B. White. Coincidence? I think not. The main character's name is Charlotte. We have a baby pig. There is a teacher whose name is Miss Fern, which of course is the little girl in Charlotte's Web. For a really deep Charlotte's Web cut, there is a character named Mr. Lurvy, who if you are a total Charlotte's Web fan like me, you remember that Lurvy was the Arable's hired hand in Charlotte's Web. Those are the only ones I can remember. There may be more, but... <coughs> I so appreciated that about this book. I loved it. Oh, I was not expecting that at all. I know, right? It's so obvious that you told me looking at the author's name and the pig on the cover, but wow. Exactly. If you want a quick, light, humorous read, and if you're an animal lover, you're especially going to enjoy it. And if you're a Charlotte's Web fan, you must read it. It was really good. No, this sounds really good. I'm going to have to put this on my list. Yeah. So what is your next book, Sarah? My next book is called A Spell for Trouble. This takes place in North Carolina, and it follows Alexandra Daniels, who um, her mom passed away when she was young, and her dad kind of made her estranged from her mom's family. And um, her dad passes away just before this novel starts. And so she gets an invitation from her mom's side of the family to come back and visit them. So she thinks, you know, she's kind of at a loose end with her dad passing away. And she also just got let go of her, from her job. And so she's like, why not? I'll go visit my aunt and my cousins. It'll be good to see them again. And um, they could use her help running their apothecary in town. She starts working in the apothecary shop. And not long after that, a guy comes in to get tea from the shop um, and later he is found dead after drinking this tea. And so her aunt falls under suspicion and is arrested. And um, Alex is of course like, she didn't do this. It wasn't her. And so she starts investigating. But on top of that level of mystery is um, the mystery of like Alex's mom's side of the family and like why her dad didn't really want her hanging out with them. And it turns out that um, her mom's side of the family, they are all descendants from sea witches. So oh, they're like did not, in this. did not see that coming. <laughs> So they, they are sea witches. They like put 
you know, they have certain items in their apothecary shop that they work their magic on. And um, like, there's a tea for good luck, for example, um, that they sort of spell to help out their clients. There's a lot of mythology around like, you know, their family history. It's really cute. It's really fun. I love the relationship between her and her cousin as it develops. And I like a lot just learning about what sea witches are. So yeah, it sounds like this is a really good combo pack of a cozy mystery. And I am so interested in the whole sea witch mythology aspect. I, I am really interested to read this to see how the author weaves that all together with, you know, the actual murder mystery. Now is this, I'm assuming this is part of a series, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a new book. It was published in 2020. Ooh, okay. um, so the second book isn't out yet. It'll be out in July. So okay, so we don't have to wait too much longer, but so we're, we're really getting in on the ground floor of this mystery series if we start it, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, all right. Sounds good. I'm sold. <laughs> Well, what's your next pick, Lisa? My next cozy mystery is also the first in a series. Uh, the series is called The League of Literary Ladies, and this is Mayhem at the Orient Express. The main setting is a bed and breakfast on this little island off the coast of Lake Erie. It's written in the first person through the eyes of a woman named B who owns the, the bed and breakfast. As typical in a cozy mystery, this is a small island. Everyone knows everyone else. And B is continually bickering with two other women on the island. Uh, there is Kate, who owns a winery. There is Luella, who's kind of new agey. She's very free spirited. She's into incense. She loves cats. And at the beginning of the book, all of these women are at the courthouse together filing various complaints. The judge has had enough and as their punishment, he assigns them to be in a book club together. <laughs> now, it's not as far off in left field as you might think because the book club at the small library on the island is in danger of being eliminated because it's just not getting very much traction anymore. So the judge is kind of killing two birds in one stone here. He's helping the library book club and he's thinking if these women have to be in a book club together, they're going to be forced to get along. So that's the very beginning premise. There's also a restaurant on the island called the Orient Express that everyone loves. There's a lot of talk about the orange chicken, which is everyone's favorite dish. One day, the owner of the restaurant is found dead after being observed the day before having a very contentious conversation with a stranger. Right after this murder is discovered, surprise, there is a spring blizzard on the island. So all these people are kind of taking refuge in B's bed and breakfast. There is a little bit of romance involved in this one and some revelations about past lives of some of the characters. It, it really has everything. It was, it was very good. And if you like Agatha Christie and if you liked Murder on the Orient Express, you will enjoy hearing them discuss the book as well. I like this so much. I do. I do love a mystery where everyone's forced together and you're like, you don't know who's done it. And everyone is so suspicious and you're forced to be in close, close proximity to them. And you're just like, I love the sort of like underlying tension that that adds to a story. So I definitely. So what is your final cozy mystery today? My final pick is called Iced in Paradise. And this takes place on an island also, actually, the island of Kauai. Ooh. And um, it follows the main character. Her name is Leilani. And she moves back to Hawaii um, to help her family run their shave ice uh, shack. Um, fun fact, in Hawaii, they say shave ice. And uh, in the mainland, we say shaved ice with a D. So interesting. Who knew? If you don't want to seem like a tourist when you go to Hawaii, ask for shave ice. 
Excellent tip. Um, <laughs> it, this has like, you know, all of the basics of a good cozy because it's like moving back home, family business, and dealing with all of the fi- family dynamics because Leilani's mom is sick. Um, she has sisters here. Her grandma is also part of the Shave Ice Shack. And her father, who she's sort of estranged from, um, moves back in the area. And he is a surf coach. Like he coaches surfers, <laughs> um, which makes sense for the you know setting. Absolutely. But- I would never think that that would be a job. But obviously, if you live. Right. Yeah. If you live there, it's obviously a job, of course. Yeah, so he sort of um, brings his newest uh, student, I guess you'd call him Luke, um, to the island to to coach him through some stuff. And Luke actually ends up dead in the shave ice shack. So her dad falls under suspicion. And even though they, you know, don't have the best relationship, she still doesn't want her dad to go down for murder because she doesn't think that he did it. Um, and so she starts to investigate who might have had it in for Luke. Um, so it's a it's a good mystery. There's a lot of um, Hawaiian culture too. There's a lot of Hawaiian words and Japanese words used in the the text. So there is an index in the beginning. Um, oh, but I you know context is usually you can usually get by with just the context happening. And I just I like Leilani a lot as a character. You can tell she's like you know, she hasn't quite found her place and she's sort of struggling to juggle everything because, you know, she's juggling the murder investigation. She's juggling her ill mother and her other family members. And she also has a long distance relationship she's trying to keep afloat. So she just has a lot going on. (laughs) I don't know how she manages it sometimes, but it's a great read. It's really quick and it's really interesting to learn about Hawaii because I don't know a lot. So... Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Well, and what better setting for now when, you know, I'm looking out my window, there's close to a foot of snow outside. I would love to transport myself to Hawaii for a while. (laughs) Yeah, I found myself like, like craving shave ice, even though it's freezing here. (laughs) So I think the book definitely accomplished like making me really be in the setting. So absolutely. Absolutely. This sounds good. These, these all sound really good. I've got a lot of cozy mystery reading ahead of me. <laughs> me too. Me too. What's your last pick, Lisa? Well, I'm going to wrap it up by talking about Mimi Lee Gets a Clue by Jennifer Chow. And this cozy mystery takes place in modern day Los Angeles. Our main character, Mimi Lee, she's in her mid 20s. She is of American, Chinese, Malaysian descent, and she has just opened up a pet grooming salon near Los Angeles called Holly Woof, which, okay, I love that. (laughs) And as an opening day present for opening the pet grooming salon, her sister gives her a cat named Marshmallow. And Marshmallow is not an ordinary cat. Marshmallow is a telepathic cat. And Marshmallow can hear and understand and communicate thoughts to human dogs and other cats, which is charming and wonderful. When Mimi's friends start bringing their dogs to her pet grooming studio, particularly chihuahuas, Mimi starts noticing that all of the chihuahuas have common health issues. And she does some research and she finds out that all of the dogs came from the same breeder. And so Mimi, she's very disturbed by this because she feels she's uncovered, you know, this really bad puppy mill situation. She goes over to the breeder's house to confront him And the next day he is found dead and Mimi is the main suspect. So this is where Marshmallow's talents come in because Marshmallow takes it upon himself to kind of do these little one-on-one interviews (laughs) with the Chihuahuas to find out the secrets and the gossip about their owners uh, so they can find who the murderer is. And it's just, I mean, obviously you're going to suspend your system of belief 
with this book, but it's so well written. The author is not taking herself too seriously. It's just a fun, good, cozy mystery. Um, there's a lot of descriptions of Malaysian and Chinese food as well, which Sarah, you and I both feel that food descriptions and food talk in a book are always a plus. Um, there is some romance. There's a neighbor slash lawyer who brings some romance to the book. And I would just recommend this to anybody who wants a humorous, cozy mystery that not only has a cat wandering around, but the cat is actually a very vital character in this book. Wow, I can't get over the conversations with the chihuahuas. I'm just like, I wonder what that must be like. <laughs> it's really fun. It's the first in the Sassy Cat mystery series. I've only read this one, but it did make me want to read more. Just the whole premise and the way the author executes it was really good. I highly recommend it. These just sound hysterical. I'm definitely going to have to put this on my list for, you know, when I need something a little silly, but wonderful, you know? Yeah. You know, humorous, but, you know, again, enough of a plot to, to keep you right in there, right in there with Mimi Lee and Marshmallow. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> well, I think that ends our book recommendations for this episode. But if you need more book recommendations, please feel free to put in a personalized reading list request. The link is in the description and we will give you 10 recommended titles based on your interests. And thanks for joining us today at the Book Buffet. We hope you got at least one cozy mystery recommendation out of today's episode. We look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, keep reading and be well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.